so uh, welcome to pragati e which are literature festival literature festival i'm sorry where we are hosting a one of a kind 24 hours author marathon and today we have a very eminent guest with us that is a film he's a film critic from Calcutta, based in Calcutta, and he has written a lot of books about movies and is a deep thinker on films himself so welcome mr Amitam Nath, to our show thank you yeah. Thank you. So again, my name is Aishwarya and I'll be speaking to you regarding the your book and a lot more than that. So, so first I would like to begin with, sorry, I'm just, so first I would like to begin with, uh, so why did you, you obviously spoken a lot about why you chose this topic, that you know that Tapan Sena isn't as discussed. You know, because whenever people think about Bengali films, they think about Brunal and Satyajit Three, the holy trinity of directors. But Tapan Sena isn't as discussed. Why do you think that is? Uh, that's, that's, a, that's a very big question, actually. But uh, Tapan Shingo, uh, or Tapan Sena, as uh, we normally pronounce his name as, uh, had been quite underrated. Uh, and uh, uh, for now, I think, for reasons unknown, in the sense that his films had bagged uh, most national awards uh, after Shottujit Rai, uh, till the time they were both uh, active and making films. Mm -hmm. uh, his films had got quite a few uh, international awards as well. So the parameters by which we actually um, revere act directors mm -hmm. were all with him exactly. in terms of the awards. Yes. And his films were making huge box office mark in Bangla cinema. Exactly. But I think uh, from the late 60s or mid 60s and then the 70s, when the political situation in the country was uh, a particular one, and we all know that, and uh, other, uh, the left leanings were, were becoming very prominent. And uh, in Bengal also, it was very, very prominent in terms of the Naxalite movement and in terms of the general middle-class Bengali intelligentsia uh, lapping to the leftist ideologies. He was very vocal in his, uh, what should I say, in his disapproval of uh, the leftist yeah. ideology yeah. As, as a political ideology. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, those who were writing on cinema in terms of the film uh, critics, in terms of the film society activists, in the newspapers or the magazines, were probably taking not that much of a liking for Tapan Shingo's films anymore. So, uh, so you would like to see that he sort of did not appeal to the ma appeal to the mass opinion. He did not give way to the popular political opinion that was, and that is why people sort of disagree to what he was saying or did to, not... to, an, to, to, to an extent but his films were the, the dichotomy is that his films were very popular as well right. most of his films almost uh, throughout his career yeah. had been very popular so as i said that there, there, there is a there is a dichotomy but he's, if yeah. you if we look at his tra trajectory as a filmmaker mm -hmm. he started off in the 1950s and he went mm -hmm. on till the 2000s so almost 50 years of filmmaking and uh, approximately 40 films he made in both Bangla and Hindi. Right. Uh, but mostly, in, mostly I think, at 31 or 32 in Bangla. Uh, he started off as a filmmaker who was dealing with uh, classical subjects. He, was starting, uh, he started off as a filmmaker who was dealing with more literary subjects, yeah. taking from Tagore and the other Bengali right. uh, novelists. And then he moved from that to a more political or polemical okay. films. So that journey is very interesting. So his base, popularity yeah. base was, uh, was cemented by the literary phase when he was doing Tagore, like Kabuliwala, for example, mm -hmm. which was very popular, uh, yeah. which was more popular than the Bimal Rai one in Hindi with uh, Baldas Shani as the yes. main, main character. So he was making these films which were very popular uh, uh, and drawing from the literary greats of Bangla, cinema, Bangla literature. Yes. And then when he moved on to his more polemical ones, he was mm -hmm. sort of uh, losing sympathy from the film critics, I must say. But his, his, uh, his box office success had been mostly very consistent. So the average film yes. goer 
Yes. Uh, did like his films uh, so throughout his. According to you, the intellectual, the so-called intellectual fraternity, that is, who they did not exactly deem him to be someone of I don't know. Like, yes. Yes. Uh, yes, and see if you if you if you look at if you look at uh, the uh, evolution of the Bengali culture in the fifties. Yes. So we had this uh, Shombo Mitro doing Rabindranath Thakur's Rokto Korobi, which was a very different mm -hmm. sort of theater. Like the Bengali theater previously was the commercial theater, and they were bringing in the first uh, instances of group theater, which became very popular. Okay. Uh, so Rokto Korobi happened in nineteen fifty four. And then Pothir uh, Pachali by Shottu happened in 1955. And Jivananda Dash, who was our greatest poet after Tagore, uh, passed away in 1954. So there were a lot of literary and cultural activities which were going on. Right. Now, Tapan Shingo, and in this milieu, Tapan Shingo was a very silent uh, entrant, if we, may, we, if we may say, because he made two, three films. Kabuli won, won an award in Berlin. Uh, for uh, Ravi Shankar got an award for Berlin for the music, uh, the highest award in music which uh, uh, which he got. So and that was that was before Shrotujitra got a award got an award in Berlin. Okay. Uh, but he 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 was uh, more as I said in the classical mold, and the Bengali intellectual audience yeah. they were actually, they were then getting a feel of. Uh, many new things in the cultural sphere, which okay. also included the first uh, international film festival happened in, I think, 1952 or 53, okay. around that time. Yes. So all the host of European films have had come, and these people had already seen them. So they were trying to place Tapan Shingo in the context of all these. Now today, when we look back after 50 years or 60 years, mm -hmm. it is retrospective. But if you think of that time, mm -hmm. then there were a lot of things which were happening which were very new and so very attractive. Tapan Shingo was a classical, was in the classical mold. So probably that is one of the reasons. Okay. So, so while uh, looking a little bit into his life before this interview, I, I found out a really interesting fact. So which I, current, which I personally feel is very relevant to today's scenario. So... Uh, while he was in, I think, the censor board or the review board or something of that sort, he had to review a bunch of Malayali films, which were blatantly sexual and obviously offensive to a more offensive uh, arena. So that inspired him to, into making movies about rape himself. And uh, so, like, before him, apparently, uh, there were not a lot of equality directors who had actually ventured into that uh, that subject matter because, let's be honest, sometimes it's very triggering and it's very difficult to get a mass audience to come to a movie like that. So, but then, the, the fact, the whole, you know, offensive and the whole, like, the, there are movies till date that we see are highly, like, not, like, not sexually positive, they're more of very, they're more promoting the rape culture. So for a director who sort of looked into a situation like that and made movies of that, like, uh, I, I keep forgetting the name, um, Ikti, Ikti Mero, um, what Adalato is Ikti Mero. Adalato ah, Ikti Mero. Adalato Ikti Mero. So that kind of films. So I feel like his political vision was, is still re relevant to a certain extent, isn't it? So what? Yes, his 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 uh, his political vision uh, now is very relevant. His exactly. political vision at that time was ahead of his time. Right. Because if, if you if you look at his journey, like as I said, like in the fifties and sixties, he started off as a uh, into the more classical mold, taking literary sources. Right. And, and in the seventies, which mm -hmm. most of uh, the film critics failed to recognize is that like, uh, sorry, like Shrotujit Rai and like Brinan Shen, mm -hmm. he also had, Tapan Shingo also had his own Calcutta trilogy. Yes. That means he, he's going from the classical to the modern because mm -hmm. the 70s, the six, end 60s and the 70s Calcutta is burning. And that is coming into the films of Shrotujit Rai, coming, coming into the films of Brinan Shen and also came into the films of Tapan Shingo. Right. And then in the 80s, when I termed it as the Conscience Trilogy, which started mm -hmm. off as with Adalot Ektime in 1982. Mm -hmm. So that is, 
it that is sort of postmodern in 1982 yes. because it is an apocalyptic world he is depicting and you made a very pertinent point that when he made this uh, film about a gang rape Yes. First of all, it was not something which was coming into the media that uh, frequently as it is coming now. So yes. that is one. But very importantly, the woman fought her battle alone till the end. Right. So it is it is actually turning that patriarchal way of looking at it. So there are no uh, so like the, the Godfathers or no, there, are, there were no superheroes and exactly. there were no male superhero. Exactly. To save no, the exactly. poor woman. Yes. Right, and and the the whole film was uh, uh, this Adalot means uh, the courtroom, mm -hmm. so it, yeah. it is going back in flashbacks, mm -hmm. and so there were the rape had happened twice, once when it actually happened right. physically in yes. the sea beach, and yes. the second time it was ha happening in front of everyone yes. in the in the courtroom. Because the, the 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 other lawyer, the the opposite lawyer, was asking uh, some very inconvenient questions, and the woman was feeling that it was the same thing which is happening, but now in a civilized society, in a more civil way. Yes. So I feel like that is that, that is a brilliant perception from some, for somebody who obviously directed a movie long back. Because currently we are still, I feel somewhere more open to talk about things. But still, there are movies which are highly offensive and highly like borderline wrong that still come on the screen. So that was a great thing for someone who... But anyway, so my question is that... So you say that uh, the Bengali intellectual audience failed to accept him. But... So, and I personally read somewhere you said that he had finally bridged the gap between commercial cinema and art, right? So, where, how would you, would you like to elaborate on it a bit? Yes, see, uh, he, as, as I said, he was, he was very popular. He was, uh, yes. his films were very popular, I mean. Yes, his sir. films were very popular uh, almost right through his career. Mm -hmm. uh, and he made extremely uh, pertinent uh, observations mm -hmm. about life around him, about the general culture, the society at large, in these films of the 1970s and the 1980s. Yes. Uh, and even in the earlier ones, the classical ones, uh, those were not run-of-the-mill commercial films. So there mm -hmm. were, and one, one, one marker of that is that uh, in Bengali cinema in the 50s and the 60s, yes. and even till the 70s, the biggest uh, romantic couple, uh, mm -hmm. like in Hindi cinema, we had Nargis and Raj Kapoor, and we have uh, uh, all sorts of uh, couples like that. In Bengali mm -hmm. cinema, it was Uttam Kumar and Shuji Trashe. Mm -hmm. And he never took both of them in any of his films. He actually never cast a Shuji Trashe in any of his films. He had Uttam Kumar in a few because Uttam Kumar mm -hmm. was a very versatile actor. But what I'm trying to say is that he's intention was different. His intention was to make uh, serious films. Mm -hmm. but, got uh, but with, with certain amounts of uh, certain amount of um, entertaining yeah. thing in them. Right. So, yeah. so the message or, mm -hmm. or and that is one of the reasons why you will find that is my perception that the greatest filmmakers at least in India, the greatest filmmakers mm -hmm. You'll find that they are uh, those who have a uh, those who convey bigger philosophy. Mm -hmm. They had very strong women characters in their films. Okay, that is a very and, and, unique obs observation. I never really thought about it that way, but it's. Yes, yeah, so if you see, if you say, uh, if you say Mrinal Shen's films, if you see Shatrujit's films, if you see Adur Gopalakrishnan's films, they are reflecting a society, and yeah. you cannot go beyond that, obviously, but. In the context of Bangla cinema, there had been so many extremely strong women characters. Yes. That that gets reflected in the in cinema as well, even if those were not films made from literature. But the perception remains, and Tahun Shingo belongs to that. There was no in many of his films, there was no subservient relationship between the man and the woman. Yes. Okay. So that way he was making films which were uh, 
I must I I I I don't really understand this art and commerce as such, but I can say serious because he was not trying to trigger to certain titillation which the audience uh, wishes to have. Okay. So even sir, even at that time, yes. Okay. So sir, would you say that the audience is somewhere evolved? Because I feel like when we talk about Bengali cinema in specific. Our mainstream cinema is very different to the generic Indian mainstream cinema. I feel because I personally have seen that you know mainstream to us to till date is somewhere a little artsy, a little has that nuances and philosophical angle of thinking. I'm talking about the main Calcutta circuit of uh, audience. So. Do you think the audience has somewhat matured or changed in its perspective of accepting films, or like, can you what kind? Of, how do you see the evolution of the Bengali cinema audience? That that is one. from top. Uh, I yes, it's, I I I I I'm, I think I understand why you were trying to take me to, but I uh, I think it's very difficult in the sense that mm -hmm. um, the entire film viewing. Uh, a, a film viewing as a culture has yeah. changed drastically in the sense that uh, not only psychologically mm -hmm. but technologically as well we have changed a lot we have evolved yeah. a lot like from going to a film as going to a theater and watching films yes. um, with hundreds of people around us to watching films on a mobile device or a tablet mm -hmm. or a laptop mm -hmm. so we have, we have technologically evolved mm -hmm. a lot but if you ask intellectually Yes. I don't think that we have evolved intellectual as such. Okay. Because see, what happened is that since the 80s, after Uttam Kaur passed right. away in 1980, yes. there had been a, a trend in Bangla cinema which had been very uh, derogatory, if I may say. If maybe strong, but uh, I think that is a strong word to say, but I think that that is how it had happened. Uh, the general... Uh, see, in, in a class, if you say, in a mm -hmm. class or in a school, yes. the, when you say that the school has performed well in this year, yeah. you don't say it if there is one person who had got 99%. You right. say when the average has done good. Mm -hmm. right? So here as well, the question is, what is the content, the quality of the average Bengali cinema? The average mm -hmm. Bengali cinema used to be very good in the 60s. Right. If, even if it, the name is not of Tavon Shingo or Shottajit Raya or even Ajay Kaur or Shit Shen Torun Mujumdar, you can still watch a film and it will give you a good amount of entertainment. May not be a lot of thinking, may not be a lot of uh, inputs which you will take away after you have watched the film. Mm -hmm. But your viewing experience will still be quite entertaining and uh, engaging on an average. Yes. The question should be, can we say the same of the current lot of Bengali cinema? If not, then the directors are not some who are out of the society. They were part of the audience only. So yes. we have failed the directors as an audience. That's what I think. So you think, so, so, uh, you don't see that happening in the current arena of Bengali cinema. Like, obviously, because we're talking about the evolution of Bengali cinema from Ray to Tapan Shingo to, you know, what it is now today. So how do you think the situation has changed or has it become better or it's deteriorating further? I think it has, a it has, uh, it has changed for the worse. But okay. uh, there, had, there, there are always, so when we say this, uh, one thing we have to keep in mind is that there are, there have been and there are always exceptions, a lot of exceptions. But let me not uh, just uh, single out one or two names so, so that it becomes very odd. But in general, I think there has been a deterioration in the, uh, in, in the quality of Bangla cinema. Yes. One reason... Uh, is I think one reason, but it's, it's a long discussion, but if, if I can just tell you in one line or one or two lines, uh, as a race, there has been a sort of inferiority complex which has crept in so deep that there is always a perception that the culture, our culture, the Bengali yes. culture, 
is not as good as the mainstream Hindi culture. So that is how the popular perception has been. Okay. So if you see, if you watch the Bengali films now, yes. again, many of them deal with nostalgia. Exactly. So you have you have films which have names which resemble names of Shotujit Rai's films. You have characters who are taken from Shotujit Rai's characters. You say that I'm making a sequel of this film of Shotujit Rai or Minal Shen or Ritik Ghatak or whoever. Or you say that I'm making a film on the making of that film which was made in the 1950s. I'm not, not, not naming anyone. But the point is, when, when you go... And, and they, what we have to understand is there is a difference between memory and nostalgia. Yes. There is a difference between memory and nostalgia. We are not going back to memories. We are living in a nostalgia. If you are living in a nostalgia, that means we are not confident about what we have right now. So, so I have personally faced this as you know somebody living away from Calcutta and uh, exploring other cultures as well. So I feel the exact problem that happened with Topur Shingo and why he is not as widely acknowledged is uh, that we Bengalis are very stuck to our sort of truths and we somewhere refuse to evolve. We we know that some people were great and we are always trying to refer to them instead of trying to come up with something new and more diverse and worse there. So do you see a scope of that happening in the Bengali movie industry? If like, how would you think that the change could be brought about? You know, how could we stop referring to memory or like nostalgia all the time and do something new for a change? My See, I, 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 I'm no prophet, so I don't want to be prophetic as well. But if we look into the Hindi cinema, mm -hmm. why the Hindi cinema for the last 20, 25, 30 years has been, or 20, 25 years has been so inspiring is not because of the Sham Benegals and the Govind Dehalanis. It is because of the fact that whoever comes to Bombay to make a film doesn't make a film of Bombay. So if, say, for example, I am a person from Jharkhand, when yes. I come to Bombay and make a film, I make a film about my place. I make, I'm making a film about Rachi. I'm making a film about a small town in Rajasthan. I'm making a film about somewhere in Madhya Pradesh or in Uttar Pradesh. So I'm bringing my story yes. into the bigger platform. The language is Hindi. Yes. But what happens in Bangla cinema is, yes. if you are staying in North Bengal and you are coming to Kolkata and you are making a film, you are not bringing your story of North Bengal. You are making a film of Kolkata. If you are staying in, say, in the western part of the state, like in Birbhum or Purulia, which is geographically quite different from the city of Calcutta in terms of it's very arid, very difficult to leave, you, when you are coming here, you are making a film, which is actually a film of Kolkata. So mm -hmm. your entire memory, which is there in, in the place where you have been brought up, is completely lost when you are in the city. So one of, one of my friends who was uh, a, a writer, he said that, why is it that in Bengali culture, everyone is from Kolkata? Like mm -hmm. if you are in Maharashtra, you see that you, there is a person who says that I am from Pune. Someone says that I am from Nasik. Someone says I am from Nagpur. Yes. Someone says I am from Bombay. But in Calcutta, wherever you leave, you say that I am from Calcutta. Uh, so we are always trying to say that Calcutta story. The Calcutta yes. story is no more. Unless you look around. So, so it was. Uh, so, while writing a book on Tapan Sena, can you just let us audience know a little bit, give a little insight into your book and what it speaks about and everything? Yes, uh, uh, the, 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 where we ended in the last question that it has to be preserved is the point where I will start this mm -hmm. answer from. Uh, is we had a very pathetic, as Indians, we had a very pathetic sense of archival. We don't believe in archiving. Uh, uh, we don't believe in keeping things uh, intact. We write on the walls of uh, heritage sites and mo monuments. We write our names A plus B and then we give yeah. dates. So we have no, no, absolutely no sense of uh, decency in that sense. And uh, that is what has happened with many of Indian films. We are thankful that National Film Archives and others uh, have done a marvelous job in at least trying to restore some of the films of some of the masters, not all. Uh, not everyone is as privileged as Shotujit Rai to get uh, international uh, 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 organizations doing the restorations. So now 
in Tokon Shingo, you can watch film films. Even some are available to buy, uh, to to in YouTube and otherwise like Nijan Shoyukate and I think Adalot Ektime is also restored by National Film Archives. So when I started off thinking right, writing, and I, I wrote a book on Shomitra Chattopadhyay in yes. 2016 called Beyond Loku, and I found that many of my friends who are uh, film critics, they also have not uh, known a lot about the Bengali filmmakers or the film, Bengali film direct actors. Uh, and the entire discussion had been only uh, around probably Shottujit Rai, Ritti Khot of Vinal Shen, uh, and the newer generations. The newer generations, I understand, because they are uh, uh, they are contemporary. Mm -hmm. And I assume that that must be the same for uh, most of the other films as well, films of the other re other regions. Like, again, in Tam uh, Malayalam films, we talk about Adur, uh, Arvindan, and uh, uh, John Abraham. So there must be other directors whom we don't know in the same way. Exactly. So I thought that it is my... Uh, uh, I wanted to make films, I uh, wanted to make uh, write books where I will be writing on certain aspects of Bangla cinema. And I thought that who who better than Tapon Shingo? Mm -hmm. I wrote a book on Shottujit Rai as well, but I think mm -hmm. Shottujit Rai, Ritikar, and Minar are still discussed and yes. their films are still uh, available uh, uh, to larger sections of the audience. Mm -hmm. But Tapon Shingo's book, I thought, was... Uh, uh, was uh, uh, the Tomoshinko's films were not that discussed in that sense, even in the Bengali audience, even within the Bengali audience. So that was the first starting point. But then when I started watching his films again for the purpose of writing this book, because I never met him in person, unfortunately. So then I figured out that uh, a few things which I, uh, even if having some amount of uh, input about his cinema, never thought of. Like, as I said, that he had his own Calcutta trilogy, uh, at the same time as Shrotujit Rai's, like in the late 60s and the mid 70s, till mm -hmm. the mid 70s. And I, uh, he made film, he made uh, uh, children's films like Ray, and uh, okay. he gave music to his films like Shrotujit Rai. Yes. But the unfortunate thing is that he did so many things uh, uh, which were so similar to what Shrotujit Rai had done. Uh, but they were from the same time. And when you have two people from the same time and two people doing almost similar things, you have, uh, we, we have gone towards Shottujitra because he's uh, probably, he was a notch higher in terms of his artistic creativities. Mm -hmm. But had Tohon Shingo happened Please. 20 years after Shottujitra happened in, in the 50s, probably he would have been <clears throat> more revered because his uh, conscience trilogy, which I termed as Adalot yes. in 82, and then Atom Queen 86, yes. uh, which, which had this uh, acid, throwing okay. acid. Uh, mm -hmm. And that is something which, again, uh, you will find so many incidents like that, which is coming up right that now, when yes. like, like guilted lover or someone who throws acid. Yes. Again, that is against that whole concept of mm -hmm. uh, the patriarchal society, how it objectifies women, yes. right? So you will, you will not find that someone is throwing acid uh, on a man. Yes, no. We normally don't hear. So, so he was trying to make films which were so very ahead of their times. And I thought that it has to be told before it is forgotten. Mm -hmm. Right. So, uh, so, like you said, he initially started off with films which are more of a classical mold, which uh, from taken from the literature and everything. Then he eventually transitioned into making films which are more of a political in nature, more political in nature. So, what what instigated that transition? Do you have any? Yes, I, th I. First of all, I I, I think it, it it were more polemical than political. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but uh, even within that, I think uh, he he had his like when we say uh, again that is uh, that is um, that is how we always perceive uh, life and people around us. When we say that someone has someone is politically aware, that means we generally feel that there is a particular political ideology that person um, uh, ascribes to. Yes. But if I say that I think that is wrong, 
Yes. That also is a political stance. Right. So he had a very political stance. He was not liking what was happening in Calcutta uh, mm -hmm. at the time in the mm -hmm. late sixties. In the name of revolution, what yes. was happening? Now we uh, we may have different opinions, but that yes. is what he 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 had his his political stance was that. Now, if you look at Shottojit Rai, yes, Shottojit Rai was very what Left. should I say? Very very neutral. Uh -huh. he, he 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 was not very open. If you if you see his film John Oron no the middle man, sorry, yes, uh, the Pratid Dondi, Pratid the adversary, you'll find that the younger brother is yes, a Nasalite. Yes. But he is not the central character. The central character is a person who who apparently is confused. Because like because his Shottu ancestor is more of on the right, capitalistic, yes. Right. So mm -hmm. Shottujit Rai was, uh, uh, with no disregards, was trying to play safe, I guess. He was addressing the calls of the time by having the younger brother as an Axalite. But he is he's just there because otherwise it seems very, uh, very unrealistic. If you're making a film in the 1969-1970 and you don't have, because he was rounded and he was... Uh, criticized for making Oronne Dinratri, where apparently in 1970 were making a film where there was no political uh, reference. Okay. Today, after 50 years, when we watch this film, we consider Oronne Dinratri as a classic yes. because it transcended the time in the way it revolved around the uh, human emotions. But anyway, so, so uh, Tapon Shingo also was making films in as Apon Joan. He was showing how the middle class family is breaking away. He's showing how the nuclear family is breaking away and the need for a, a household uh, kip or a household maid who is yeah. part of the family, part of the greater family, who is coming from the village and staying with the... the so, so the cracks of the, uh, of, of, the, of the nuclear family is showing up in his films as well. Mm -hmm. And when he made Raja, which was before John Orono, which is the middleman. If you have watched John Orono, if, or if the audience has watched John Orono of Shottujit Rai, yes. at the end of it, the main character, Shomnath, is taking his friend's daughter as a prostitute to the businessman. And the film ends there. Right. Two years before that, or one year before that, Tapan Shingo made Raja, in which the film started off with the main character, Raja, who was actually ferrying this lower middle class women from the suburbs to the rich businessmen in Calcutta. So, and how did the, this, this ins, these two incidents become similar in two different films? There is no hidden uh, uh, secret in, in it. The point is that that is something which was happening at the time. So they were both responding to that time. Mm -hmm. Right. So that is, the, 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 that is, I think, where uh, Tapan Shingo's uh, importance lies. He was not, and I mentioned it in my book as well, in no uncertain times, uh, that we always bracket him with the likes of Ajay Kaur and uh, Oshit Shane and Torun Mojinder. But the point is, in the late 60s and the early 70s, when Oshit Shane, when Ajay Kaur was making Malodan and uh, Porinita from Shorat Chandra and Rabindranath, which were classical uh, 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 triangular love stories. Uh, and Oshit Shen was making Ma or something like Ma, uh, Mamta and other films and Safar with Rajesh Khanna, the tear jerker. And Torun Majundar was making Balika Bodhu and Sriman Prithiraj. They, they are eminently entertaining films. But what I'm trying to say is those were not reflecting the time. But Tapan Shingo was making Aponjon and Akhoni and uh, uh, and and uh, uh, Raja, but he was clubbed with not with the, the Shens and the Shottujit Rai. Right. He was clubbed with lesser directors, which is unfair. Right. So, sir, it was really nice talking to you. I genuinely hope that after reading your book or even while watching this interview that at least this inquisitive curiosity would be stirred in the audience to actually go and check out a movie of this and i wish you all like great success for you and your book and thank you yes i hope this was a nice session for you as well yes it, it is a nice session for me, and I love talking about Tapun Shingo and Bangla cinema wherever I get a chance to. Uh, the main purpose 
I will be served if people go and watch his films, whichever are available. Some of his films, even his Hindi films, like Dr. Kimot, which was made in the 1990s, is something which I feel is very important in today's, uh, today's uh, political or social scene. Right. Or Admi or Aurat is another film, which is also in Hindi. So even if you watch your, his Hindi films, you'll find, you will find his vision his philosophy about life. Like Admi or Aurat is actually about, uh, about uh, secular, secularism, if you can say, because it's a Hindu uh, man and a Muslim woman. Okay. And in, uh, in uh, Dr. Kimoth, it is about, uh, about tolerance, I guess, mm -hmm. about giving space to someone who is doing, trying to do something different. So I think we need these Two aspects in today's in India. Highly relevant in today's political climate, I would say. Yes. I think Admi or Aurat is and Ek Dr. Kimoth are the two films which the greater Indian audience should watch. Mm -hmm.